Good evening, guys. I hope you're doing well. Right, let me just find the background music for that we normally use for worship. Um, I just want to thank God. I want us to thank God. Honestly, um, <laughs> what God keeps revealing to me is not a joke. Hi, good evening, Sharon. Hope you're doing well. I think you're like a new, are you new to the live stream? My first time seeing you. Just bear with me, I'm finding the background music. <laughs> you guys are normally quiet. It's like you're here to war. Like you're so quiet. You're here to war. Your no nonsense is amazing. You're here to war, pray. Right, so we're just waiting for some more people to join before we move forward. Just bear with me. I'm just looking for what we're teaching. What I'm going to be teaching today. Right, let's just go up. So let's just thank God. Let's just thank God for what He's doing in our lives. Just something my nose. Let's just thank God for what he's doing in our lives. It's very important that we do not hold any sort of the glory, but God gets the glory, you know, no matter how it looks like. No matter how it looks like. The devil, you know, I know he definitely confuses. He can confuse us. And, you know, we can get to a state of frustration, a state of, you know, just when a person is confused, you know, whatever feeling that, you know, you could feel when you're confused and you want God to make certain things clear, but it's a bit fuzzy. And I know God likes to be mysterious. The Bible does state that. So again, we have to allow God. We have to allow God. We have to allow God in the, in the, the valley of the shadow of death. You know, there's not a, not a lot. I believe there will not be a lot of light in the valley of shadow of death. It sounds like a very dark place, right? It sounds like there's not a lot of light, right? But we're the light. Yeah, and sometimes, sometimes, you know, we as the light need, you know, like ourselves to shine and make you know, dark places even brighter. So corporate prayer, having a fellowship is very important for us to, to see and make our way, for God to help us see and make our way clear. It's very, 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 very important. But you know, even when we're in fellowships, even when we, we watch online, we still again, confirmation after confirmation God what are you saying what are you saying the devil is also trying to confuse us God what are you saying God what what are you saying so it's very important we we um we hold on to yeah my mouth is still healing for those who joined <laughs> but yeah um it's very important for us to hold on to God it's very important for us to hold on to God and you know not just take, the Bible says, test the spirit, not just take a word for it, like the, like any word for, 
for whatever situation you're going through. That's how the devil will confuse you, right? So you have to hold on to this particular, this particular word or this particular, you know, opening up of your eyes. So it's not so, it's not so blurry, right? And test the spirits as you're watching different ministers. You're, you're joining different corporate prayers, you're praying alone. You know, when you're looking for your answer and it's blurry, right? Again, keep praying, pray through the, the confusing, pray through the, pray through the darkness, right? You're the light, right? And when everyone's together, as one body, it is more bright. But at times, God keeps us keeps us in a place of stillness right so still test the spirits test the spirit test the spirit right that's where the confusion comes in like what is God saying what is God saying test the spirit test the spirit test the spirit what is the Bible saying what is that what is the Bible saying you know does this make sense in the Bible is there something close to it, you know, that the Bible can confirm? You know, even if it's just a little bit of what a scripture is saying, it gives you some kind of, um, it lessens your confusion and it makes some kind of, it gives you some kind of um, clear, a clearer path of understanding or whatever direction you're going in. Right, so let's just, pray that God will continue to, to, to shine his light. The Bible says that let the light shine so brightly within us, right? That the darkness cannot comprehend it. So we're asking God to let the light shine so brightly within us. Let the light shine so brightly within our homes, within our, our environment, within our communities, that the darkness cannot comprehend it. If there's too much darkness, we cannot see clearly. Right, so we have to pray. We have to continually pray. We have to continually pray. There's certain prayer points that I will again use. It might be a different style of teaching, but at the end of everything, we will be praying about certain things. You can't just pray once and let and let um, and let it go. Right, and just think that it's going to stay perfect right we have to um we have to clean we always have to cleanse what god has put in front of us to do what we ourselves are doing right so what god has given us to do and what you know our own path i know it's confusing but i, I would say it's like the ministry work there's the ministry work and then um what you how you serve god and then you know, your, how you, the works of your hands, right? How you feed, how you, you obtain, what, how you obtain your, you know, your gladness. The Bible says, the works of my hands will provide and they will make me glad, right? So there's that side of your life. So it's, it's, it's very important that we, we pray, we pray, we pray. We don't just stop once. We don't just stop once. Right, we've prayed about that next. No, we continually pray about it. Right, so I'm just praying again that God will give me discernment on how to teach. Because I can teach, I'm sure, with any sort of scripture. You know, God will give me the ability to teach it every which way that is, you know, that is fitting to you as the sheep that's following this ministry, right? But we have to pray, we have to pray. We have to go over, go over certain things. I've noticed families, you know, prophecies um, are being, <laughs> are being, are being, um, you know, um, I would say activated in this season. And we have to pray for, <laughs> we have to pray for the, the strength of God, not just for us, but for ourselves. You know, God answers your prayer. 
God answers your prayer, your own personal prayer, a lot faster when you pray for others as well. When you know you've had a dream, when you've noticed something about your friends, right? Or if you just you may not know, you may not notice anything, but you still pray for your friends, you still pray for those around you. And God will move faster in your own families, right? The Bible even says that you're you're to pray for your enemies. Right? So don't just pray for those you like. Don't just pray for those, you know, who benefit who benefit you. You know, praying benefits you because you can feel the impact of what God is doing in their life. Pray for other people. Pray for other people. Cover other people with your prayer. Right? So we'll be praying. I want you also to remind me. You know, if there's anything that is going on, you know, send me a message. Let, let us pray. Let us use it to pray. Let us use it to pray. Let us use it to pray and cover. Cover. Bible says, <laughs> the Bible says, I remember Jesus um, praying and the disciples, right? The Bible, was, the Bible stated this. Jesus praying and the disciples and were asking, how do you pray? Show us how to pray like this, the Lord's Prayer. And Jesus, even Jesus was like, um, you know, make, you know, make, you know, our trials, the trials you give us, Lord, you know, make them not too harsh. So this is what our prayers are doing. We're not saying God to, sh- sh- we're not saying God should stop. We're not saying God should stop, you know, the trials that He has placed in our lives. We're not telling God to stop, because if that stops, we pre- we pretty much stop. We, we pretty much stop developing, right? So we have to keep polishing, we have to keep c- cleansing, we have to keep cleaning, right? Cleaning, we have to keep cleansing, we have to keep cleaning and maintaining what God has placed in our heart. And, you know, it's not just cleansing and maintaining, but it's even just to keep it, right? That you don't lose what God has called for you to have, what God has called up. For other people to have as well that he's placed in your heart right so it's very very important it's extremely important but right? you don't just clean your house once I right? do clean it anything once and it just remains clean so it's the same thing with what you're asking God for when you finally get it what you're asking God for when you finally get it you still continue that same prayer as if you haven't got it that's the heart posture we're, we're to have we continue that same type of prayer to keep to maintain to cleanse right you keep that if you keep that same level of you know heart posture as if you didn't have what God what what the prayer you use to to obtain what God gave you. If you continue like that, you know, it will be covered. It will be cleansed. God will purify it. Right? So it's very important we we bear this in mind. I want you guys to also remind me. Right? Um, Families right now know that they're being tested. I know um, a lot of, again, the scriptures are being activated in this season. I love scriptures of being, I'll say, fulfilled. That's the, the right term that the Bible uses. So let us pray that God makes clear our path. God makes clear our path in the mighty name of Jesus, that he gives us a heart, to, to, a, heart of, a heart of holding on, a heart of it's a heart of running right because you see your path so you're running you're running right so to run the bible says we press towards the mark so if you're pressing towards something of the high calling in christ jesus if you're pressing towards something right there's a level of energy that we need right there's a level of energy there's a level of courage to continue Continue to do something even though you can't see it yet at times. Right? It's a lot of courage. 
it's a lot of strength right? it's a lot of faith it's a lot of faith so let us pray in the mighty name of Jesus hey Saturday that God will will make our paths clearer the Bible says he makes our paths straight but we're asking God to again open our eyes and to shine his bright his light brightly within us that the darkness cannot comprehend it that God pushes out the darkness that is around us so we're able to see properly in the mighty name of Jesus let us pray Lord, give us. Your word says that in our weakness you are made strong. Lord, be our strength. Lord, be our strength. Lord, be our strength. Lord, be our strength. In our weakness you are made strong. Lord, be our strength to keep us pushing, pushing forward. Pressing forward, pressing forward, pressing forward towards the higher calling, your higher calling, your will for our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, your word says, Lord, your word says that make, uh, uh, make your trials, make your trials, make your trials so that we can bear it. Make your trials bearable. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, make your trials bearable. Lord, make your trials bearable. Lord, make your trials bearable. Lord, make our trials bearable. Lord, make our trials bearable. Lord, your word says that our spirit, that the yoke is broken when our spirit is made fat. Lord, the yoke, the yoke is is broken when our spirit is made fat. Lord, help us to teach our spirit. Lord, also teach our spirit. Lord, help us to go to the right places to make our spirit eat, nourish, and grow fat. So every yoke, every stronghold is broken in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus that we're able to press. You know, anything that is stopping you from moving forward, any tying, it is trying to stop you from pressing. You know, it is not your will, but God's will, and it's trying to stop you. Anything that is trying to stop us in the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke that is trying to stop you. But anything that is trying to stop us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, you're trying to press. We're trying to press in the mighty name of Jesus. It cannot stop us. It cannot stop us in the mighty name of Jesus. It cannot stop us. It cannot stop us. We are pressing. We are pressing. We are moving forward. We are pressing towards the mark of the higher calling in Christ Jesus. We are pressing forward. Both physically and spiritually we are pressing forward in the mighty name of Jesus we are pressing we are pressing forward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and as of Lord thank you for bringing us bringing us together today thank you Lord for bringing us together today thank you Lord thank you Lord for your for 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 making us who we are thank you Lord for where we are right now Lord thank you thank you Thank you, thank you, Lord. We can, we're asking you to give us a heart of thanks, a heart posture of continuous thanks that you get the glory. No matter how it looks like, you get the glory. And Lord, and when, and when you're giving us our daily bread, that every day you give us a daily bread, our bread for the day that we're to manage. Lord God, help us to, to, to know how to manage 
it for that particular day but but and and also know lord god not to to be too hasty to move too fast lord god to move too fast trying to figure out what what could be the bread for tomorrow in the mighty name of jesus christ and Nazareth? Lord, you continually get all the glory. Not man, Lord, we direct our, our, our praises. We direct the glory, the honor. We direct it to you, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, receive the praises. Lord, receive the honor. Lord, remove anything out of our lives that is keeping you from receiving the glory in our lives, receiving the honor, receiving the praise, receiving the thanks. Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, we pray, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord. 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 I think I should move this way a little bit. <laughs> Just trying to be comfortable to, to do the will of God and to direct you guys, direct you guys as God would like for, for me to direct you. So again today we are praying about families. We've been praying a lot about families. I think this is the, the, I would say this is the part three. Again, pray for my mouth, it's healing. The enemy is trying to have a stronghold. And to, I think we, the best term for us, like I think some of you will understand, to capture my mouth. But it will never work. The Bible says the weapon will be formed, but it will never prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. So as I'm teaching, please place on your hearts that God is healing my, my mouth. In the mighty name of Jesus, that his will will come through my mouth. Not the will of man, not the will of, will of any other spirit, but God's will, Jesus Christ and Nazareth, the Holy Spirit, Father God, the Holy Trinity, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. We pray, Amen, Amen. Right, so God is keeping me on families that we're to that we're to to stay praying and understanding, you know, the fa the family dynamic, what we are to expect, what we're to do as Christians, right? What we're to do as Christians, right? And what we are to and how we are to grow right it's very <laughs> it's very i keep saying very important but i'll say it's very it's very healthy this word that god is placing on my heart about families it's, it's very important it's it's very healthy i'd say it's very very healthy that we we open our eyes to this word. It's very healthy that we, we take on this word, not just for ourselves, but, but share it with our family members, right? Share the word with our family members. If it's by sharing the video or by preaching, teaching what you're learning on here to your family members, right? They may not see what you're seeing, you know, it's very hard to see yourself. It's very hard to see your own self. So as Christians and as representatives of God in the family, in our families, right, we are to direct them, right? So that is your ministry. That is your ministry. That is your ministry. I know some, some people may expect you to have or online, you know, prayer, prayer, evangelizing, especially if your family is not Christians or truly Christians, those who are actually 100% for God. I will say have a zeal, not 100%, but those who have a zeal for God. 
those who have a zeal for God, there's a standard we're to have, right? So it's important we, again, cleanse, we clean, we purify our family. So your family is your first ministry. Your family is your first ministry, right? And for some, it will continually be your ministry, right? You may not evangelize outside of your family, right? But, but I, I would say you should. But I know that before you can have the courage to step out, you start with your family. Right, again, always remember Job, before Job actually could move forward. He was encouraged by his friends. He, would, he prayed for his friends, right? And then he, you know, the blessings of God now fell on him. So your first ministry is your family. Your first ministry is your family. So that is your ministry. So you are the leaders in your family. Right? For those who have just joined, your first ministry is your family. You are the leaders as Christians in your family. Right? So it's for you to, to feel like you're entering into the prophetic, the 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 prophet's role in your family, enter into the pastor role in your family, the apostle role in your family, right? The evangelist role in your family, the healer in your family, right? It's very important, it's very healthy. It's very healthy. So now you have seen the importance of who you are, and yes, you do have a ministry. It's your family. Right, so we're going to be talking about growing outside of your family. So there's been other teachings I've done about the family. So again, catch up, watch the rest of the, the videos, the teachings posted, and you would understand you'll have the full picture so you, God is going to give you the full picture in the name of Jesus as I'm teaching now. But you have a deep understanding once you watch the rest of the videos too. Right, so it's a it's a step-by-step -step process as God is giving me the daily bread. Right, so don't miss the, the daily bread for yesterday. Don't miss the daily bread for the, the last fellowships that we've had. Right, so we're, 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 God is teaching us today about growing outside of our family growing outside of our family and we're speaking about we're teaching about me and God the Holy Spirit <laughs> we're teaching about leaving his family by right? Abraham leaving his family to grow on his own So we can find this in Genesis, the book of Genesis, chapter 12, verse 1. I don't know if you guys are, um, you have your Bibles with you, but I'll give you, give you some time to find it. So we're reading now from Genesis 12, chapter 1. And it states, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred. Right? So God asked Abra Abram. So at this point he was Abram. So his name wasn't changed yet. She said, now. So it states, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. So out of thy country, out of thy kindred, those you know. And from thy father's house, your father's house. 
onto a land that I will show thee. Right, so onto a land God is showing Abram. So God is asking him to come out, to leave his, his, the place he knows, right? Everything, he knows how to get around, right? He's familiar, he knows everything. He knows, well, may not know everything, but he's familiar, right? With his environment, his surroundings. Right, get out, get out. What God is saying, leave. Right, out of thy country. Out of your family's house. So out of your father's house. Onto a land that I will show thee. Right, so why are we, why are we talking about this? Why is God placed this on my heart? Because when you're growing, when you're growing, you know, you need more space. You need more space. And your family members are also growing. And they too need space to grow. So let me find, um, just bear with me. Just bear with me. Right, so just moving forward from my the scriptures that I am using to teach. So these are the reasons why we we move out of our family. Right? So there's Job. We're also going to be talking about Job and Esau. Right, you know the story, for those who don't know the story of Job and Esau. Let me just read this story for you now so you can have a better idea of why, why, God, why God would want us to, to move, to move out of our father's homes. So I'm reading now from Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32, verse 13 to 15. Right, so we're reading now from Genesis chapter 32, verse 13 to verse 15. I'll just wait for those, for you guys to find it, for those who are with their Bibles. Right, I'm going to start reading now. And it states, And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw him, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of the place Am Ahamedim. I hope I pronounced that right. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Sarai, Sarai, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my, unto my lord Esau, thy servant Jacob, saith, saith thus, I have sojourned with 
Liban and stayed there until now and and I have oxen and asses flock and men servants and women servants and I have sent and I have sent to tell my my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight and the messengers returned to Jacob saying we came to thy brother Esau and also he cameth to meet thee and 400 men with him then Jacob was gratefully afraid and distressed and he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and herds and the camels into two right so he's afraid of his brother seeing his greatness right so Esau is his brother and he's afraid of of Esau seeing his greatness so he divides his greatness into two right how did he obtain this he had to leave his father's house but even outside his father's house he had to manage what god had what god gave him right how you know to protect <laughs> i would say you know when an individual is big and an individual has expanded and there's there's the obedience of god there's working through the individual right it's very important that when you're managing your family members right you know you know you know there will be certain they may be jealousy they may be jealousy right you they may be jealousy they may be jealousy so we're seeing Jacob here divide divide what he owns because his brother is coming so let me read that again then Jacob was greatly afraid I'm reading from verse 7 then Jacob was was greatly afraid and distressed and he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two so he decreased himself into two bands I'm reading from verse um, verse 8 now and and said if Esau came to the to the one company and smite it then the other company which is left shall escape right so we can tell that this family dynamic these two brothers are a bit they have heat there's a there's a heated um, they have a heated relationship Right? You don't know every family, I mean, it's your family, you love your family, but that's why God is asking you to leave and expand outside of your family. Right? It's, it's healthy to expand outside of your family. It becomes unhealthy when you decrease yourself and you allow your family members to enter into temptation. Right? You allow your family members to enter into temptation because your greatness, because you're, you become, you know, you, be, you keep expanding, there's no more space. So they feel frustrated, especially if for those who have, have not left our, you know, our parents' home and maybe have another sibling living with us or have siblings that you know you see regularly right so we have to be we have to use wisdom we have to use wisdom when we are expanding right it's healthy to see your family 
right? But know how to manage yourself and your family with what God has given you. Know how to manage your family, right? You stay with your family. You're constantly with your family. You've gone to a point, okay, you can leave your family. You can take care of yourself. But if you stay so close to your family, um, so close to your family, you know, all the time, temptation will be there. Temptation will be there. You know, God, God showed me one or two things. Um, God showed me one or two things, but especially with, especially with, I'll just say the basic Cain and Abel. The basic scripture that will, everybody would pretty much know, Cain and Abel, is something that is taught a lot. And, you know, because of Abel's offering to God, he was still in the same house with his brother. Right? And God accepted and did not accept Cain's offering. You know, that brought jealousy and then death. So Cain killed Abel because of jealousy. He took his life because of jealousy. Right, so what would you have said? Okay, what's the best thing for, for Cain? What, what would be the best um, technique that Cain could have used, to, uh, sorry, Abel could have used to stay alive? Right, he would have moved his, you know, where he, he, he offers God, where he offers things to God, so far that they will not find it. So far that they will not have an idea. Now, this, it's beautiful because this is why the Bible says that, you know, let me not state that, but it's a scripture I actually love to use. But again, I want this to be God and not man. Right, so the wisdom of Cain. The wisdom of, sorry, the wisdom of Abel wasn't enough to keep him alive. The wisdom of Abel wasn't enough to keep him alive. Why would you, you know, the wisdom, I don't want to sound, but you, know, you hide your offering. The Bible states this, you hide. There's certain things you hide, right? You hide, right? You hide. And we see this pattern in the Bible with siblings still in the father's house, not yet outside of the family's house, the father's house, right? Not yet outside of the, fa the father's house. Right, but in the father's house and jealousy is the spirit of jealousy is really really high right the spirit of jealousy is really really powerful within the homes that many scriptures state right tempting you know we have some being sold for money siblings sell their Siblings sell their, their other sibling into slavery because of money. But it, it became because of money. That was even a, that was even a mercy, a, a, a part of mercy for Joseph. It was a part of mercy for Joseph. Because his younger brother, right, that was... The, the brother that was from his mother, right, managed to convince the, the rest of the brothers, his older brothers, who was who have who have a different mother from them. Not to kill him. 
right? Because Joseph was shining too much in his family. Joseph was shining too much in his family. It's a very uncomfortable subject. That's why I keep um, fussing about, <laughs> right? But Joseph was, he wasn't yet, he had not yet become physically what God had called him to be. But, you know, the shine was then and he will talk too much. He will talk too much. He will talk too much to his brothers about his visions. So, is there a better route? It was the will of God, yes. But was there a wiser way to manage? Could he have managed his brothers with wisdom, deeper wisdom? Right? Most of the stories, you know, there is a... Most of, I'll say most of the teaching, the Bible's not stories, the Bible's teaching. But most of these teachings in the Bible, you know, it's a... They get to a point where you have to separate from your family members. Honestly, it becomes unhealthy. It becomes unhealthy when you are always with your family. You know, it's, there's levels of jealousy and you know, love can also be used in a devious way to deceive. Right? You know, the easiest shots, the easiest targets, right, is a family member. So we need to apply wisdom as Christians when managing our family members, right? They must love me. You know them to love you. That's your heart posture. You're a Christian. But the first, the first sibling teaching in the Bible was Cain killing Abel. So God is showing us what God is showing us, God allowed it for us. Don't don't um don't misuse what God you know the teachings there in the Bible. What God is saying there is how better could you have handled this situation? How better can you apply wisdom? So you don't you do not, you know, you do not you're not you do not you're not you don't enter into a compromising situation with your family members. How do you apply wisdom? When you're reading the Bible, how would you have managed things better like Joseph? Right? How would you have managed things better? How would you have managed things better? How would you have managed things better? Like, um, there's so many siblings in the Bible. Right? But how would you have managed? All of these stories, how would you have managed? Sorry, not stories, teachings in the Bible. How would you have managed them better? All right, so God is showing you this is the end result. We can't fight God's will for our lives, right? But there is health, there's a healthier, there is a healthier outcome. Because God is going to do what he's going to do in your life anyway. So he would have used your family to achieve what he needed to achieve in your life. Right? But, but again, there is a separation. God used separation. Right? So Joseph could become who God wanted him to be. Look how long they didn't see him for. Right? Esther was an orphan. 
right? Thank God her uncle had mercy. Right? How did God, God had to remove her from her family? You have to apply wisdom for a healthier outcome. When reading the scriptures in the Bible, this is what, this is what happened. <laughs> I did not take this route. Right? This is what happened. I do not take this route. So, I'm trying to look for a scripture or a family in the Bible that there was a... I don't believe there is any. Right? Even, well, I think the most... I believe Jesus and his, his brothers had a good relationship. Right? And I believe that's... I mean, Jesus and his... His brothers had a good relationship. I mean, it's Jesus, right? So he had, he applied the wisdom. So his brothers would not feel, his brother would not feel jealous. Right? He would have died before he got on that cross. If there was in wisdom. You know, the Bible also always states Jesus, you know, adding, you know, I think it's increasing in stature and wisdom. Right, so Jesus is always described as being wiser than his age. And God had to give him that wisdom to stay alive. First, first in the ministry that God put him in. First in the first ministry that Jesus was put in. His family. Look how Jesus was shining. Even as a young child. So we have to apply wisdom. Right? But we have to know when to leave. We, know how, we have to know when to, to leave our family. I'm not saying don't ever talk to your family. But I'm saying have. There should be a healthy. Full of wisdom. Distance. A healthy, full of wisdom relationship. A healthy, full of wisdom, you know, when you're seeing your family, when you're planning events with your family, there should be a healthy, full of wisdom. You know, that's what should be applied. Jealousy is, it, it's, it, it, the spirit of jealousy works so well in families, right? It, you see the person every day. You see the person every day, right? You can hear, there's so much. Right, and again, the love, love can also be used as a tool to harm. Right, so there needs to be a healthy distance when you're ready to grow your own family. Now, when you're ready to grow your own family, there should be a healthy distance. There should be a healthy distance. Right, I believe talking FaceTime, right? Talk via FaceTime. Again, what did Jacob do when Esau was coming? Esau was coming with anger. Again, a sibling, a sibling, you know, confusion, a confusing situation. A sibling full of confusing situation, which is natural. So he had to divide what he had, just in case everything would be destroyed at the hand of his brother. So that is wisdom. That is the wisdom we're asking God for. That's the wisdom we're asking God for. That is the wisdom we're asking God for when managing our families. A 
but let me continue to read for those who have just joined I'm reading from Genesis chapter 32 verse Genesis chapter 32 verse 13 to, to verse 15 and we stopped at we stopped at verse 7 and it states then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed and he divided the people that was with him the flock the herds and the cattle into two bands and and said if Esau his brother come to one company and smite it then the other company which is left shall escape and Jacob said "O oh God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac the Lord which saideth unto me return unto thy country and to thy kindred and I will deal with thee I am not worthy of the least of all the the mercies and all the truth which which thou hath sowed into thy servant for with my staff i passed over this jordan and now i am be and now i am become two bands i'm reading now from verse 11 I'm reading from old, old um, King James Version, so not New King James, old, well, the standard King James Version. So get used to using this Bible. This is the original, this is the original Bible. Um, again, it was, it was translated directly from the Jewish languages. Right, so it was translated, it's the Bible that was translated directly from Hebrew. Right, from Hebrew. So it's the Bible that was translated. Then after that, individuals now used the King James Version to now translate. So this is the authentic first translation of the Bible into English. So it's very important we stick with. Um, King, the King James Version to be more precise okay I'm, I'm reading now from verse 9 and Jacob said wait just bear with me okay I'm reading now from verse 10 I am not worthy of the least of all the, mer the mercies and, all, and of all the truth which thou hast sowed unto thy servant for with my staff I pass over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. So he had two bands, he's become two bands. He had to separate his, what he owns, his belongings, right? His people, his family into two bands before his brother came. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, from for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me, and the mother with, with the children. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good. This is the Lord responding to Jacob's prayer. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good, and make thee and make thy seed as the sand. Of the of the sea let me read that again and thou saidest I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea which cannot be numbered for for mult for multitude sorry which can't be numbered or mo or I believe it's multitude. I'm reading now from verse 
13. I'm reading now from verse 13. And it states, And he loaded there that same night and took of that which came to his hand a present for Esau, his brother. So he's using wisdom. He first sent some of his men to speak to his brother and to see what, what, how the state of, you know, if the brother is angry still, you know, if the brother will receive him. Now he's also got a present. You know, he's using wisdom trying to calm his brother down. For Esau, his brother, I'm now reading from verse 14. 200 she goats and 20 he goats, 200 oars and 20 rams. This is what he's taking, Jacob is taking to Esau. 30 meliks, melik camels with, with, their, with their cloaks. 40 kin and 10 bulls. 20 she asses and 10 fowls and he delivered them into the hand of his servants every every dove by every dove by themselves and said unto his servants pass over before me and put a space be and put a space between between dove and dove and he commanded the foremost saying, When Esau my brother meetest thee and asks thee, saying, Whose whose art thou? And whether and whether goest thou? And those and those are and those are these before thee. Then thou shalt say, They be thy servant Jacob. It is a present sent unto, sent unto my Lord Esau. And behold, also he is, he is behind us. So before he actually meets his brother, you know, they, they had a dispute. He ran away, right? They, were, they separated, right? They separated. He needed to grow. He, Esau also needed to, to go through whatever he was going through. There was a family dispute and he's come back great. And now he has to face his brother. And I believe he's greater than his brother. So before he meets his brother, right? They didn't leave each other on good terms. He gives, he gives, you know, a, <laughs> he gives so much to his brother. He sends his servants ahead of him to give so much to his brother before he finally bumps into his brother, before he finally meets his brother. So this is wisdom, right? He sent his men first. How, how is he like, right? It's almost like battle, right? Isn't that what they do? <laughs> they, they send spies, right, to check out the area, right, before moving in. And maybe even before doing anything, they'll have a, a conversation. So maybe presents will be sent before they have a conversation. If this battle needs to, be, needs to happen. Right? So the battle will not be as harmful. Right? So the impact of whatever confusion that is happening is going on between both parties. You know, it's, it's softer. And the, 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 the outcome will not be so damaging, but it will be the healthiest outcome that can be. I'm reading now from verse 7. No, I'm reading now from verse 18. Then thou shalt say, they be thy servant, Jacob's. It is a present sent unto my Lord Esau, his brother. 
and behold also he is behind us so take this gift this is what the scripture is stating take this gift and jacob is um almost here you'll see your brother who you're very angry with i'm reading now from verse 19 and so command he the second and the third and all the and all that followed the do the, the doves the droves sorry saying on this manner shall ye speak unto Esau when ye find him and say ye moreover behold thy servant Jacob is behind us for he said I will appease him with the present that goeth before me and the and afterward I will see his face Pre, um, pre adventure he will just bear with me he will accept me so he's humbling himself for his brother to accept him by whatever he did I'm just talking from those who don't know this story but it's like you can tell he's done something bad right he's done something really bad or their conversate like their 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 relationship as siblings there's something you know right so this is like i'm sorry <laughs> you know this is what should have happened this is what i should have given you this is how the outcome should have been for you So I'm reading now from verse 21. So went the present over before him and himself logged, lodged that night in the company. So he lodged that night with his, his group of people. I'm reading now from verse 22. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his 12 sons and pass over the the four the ford Jab, Jab, Jabrook. and he took him and sent them over the brook and sent over and sent over that he had and Jacob went sorry and Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. So he also was, <laughs> he also was praying. So he sent the, how many, that's like four now. Last four moves he has made before seeing his brother. Right, wisdom moves. And now he's praying and wrestling. Right to the break of day, he's praying. Right, so the Bible stating, and there wrestled a man with him until the break of day. So he wrestled, right, until God will give him his breakthrough, that his brother will accept him, that the, his brother will forgive him, that they will be able to forgive his, each other. Right, that there will not be any sort of passing away. Right, but a healthier outcome. I'm reading now from verse 25. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. So the Bible states that 